Okay, welcome to Mobile Web Opp Opportunities. My name is Peter Glaser. I am running a mobile advertising company in Germany. And um, before we get started, please remember these feedback forms. All right, um, before we start, um, who of you has used the, the internet from their phone before? Anybody? Quite a lot of people. So next question, who has done affiliate marketing on the mobile internet before? One. <laughs> um, this is what we're going to talk about. First of all, I'm going to explain the differences between the traditional web and the usual online marketing and affiliate marketing and um, the mobile stuff. Then I'm going to show you a few things about building mobile sites. Then we're going to cover traffic sources. Um, monetization methods, short summary, and then I'll give you some more, more links so that you can um, perhaps do things on your own. The first thing, the traditional web versus the mobile web. You can see we have completely different screen sizes. On a PC monitor, you have, I don't know, 1,024 or 1,280. Um, on the iPhone, it is smaller already, and then you have these old school phones that still a lot of people are using. It's very small. So, which means displaying the, uh, the regular web pages on a mobile phone doesn't really make a lot of sense. And even the iPhone, which has a zoom functionality, this zooming in and out is, is getting really boring, and from a conversion point of view, it just doesn't work. Second thing is input devices. On a PC, you have a large keyboard and the mouse. Um, the iPhone, for example, or either um, smartphones have touch screens and um, standard phones, the dumb phones, only have a keyboard. Um, same thing, um, if you try to serve um, um, a regular web page with a big form, lots of form fields, it's not going to work because mobile phone users won't fill them out. Um, next thing, connection speed. You have DSL speed at home, or most people do. Um, on your smartphone, on your 3G phone, you have a pretty good connection, but um, the old phones using the GPRS standard, um, they are slow. And surfing the web with these phones is like going online with a modem at home. It's, it's just not the standard anymore. One major important difference um, between the wired internet and the mobile internet is um, um, the use of cookies, JavaScript, and Flash. Um, most phones that are being produced now do support cookies. However, the older ones that are around, many of them don't. Um, that also creates um, a problem in terms of tracking. So you need, um, you would need a cookie-less tracking system for affiliate marketing. We're going into that a little bit further. Um, JavaScript, it's even worse. Um, many phones don't support JavaScript and Flash. Um, there are hardly any phones today that, um, that support Flash. They only have a version of Flash Lite, which is, um, not really what you need to display large flash sites on the phone. So what's, what's the result of this? First of all, there are technical limitations. You can't really transfer the wired internet to a mobile phone. The user experience is different. Um, screen sizes, input devices, and so on. So what we really need is um, alternative solutions. And they are, for advertisers, you have to create mobile optimized sites. Don't try to um, use your existing website to serve mobile phone users. It's, it may work from a technical point of view, but in terms of conversion, it's, it's not going to work. The second thing is you have to um, sh use short URLs on your, um, on your websites. Um, certain phones have um, limits of 96 or 192 characters. 
um, in the link of the actual URL. So if you use session IDs or, or anything like that in your URLs, you're likely to, to lose um, users or the session might be lost and, and things like that. Just keep that in mind. Um, next thing, very important. Um, as um, a lot of phones still do not support cookies, um, the actual online tracking cannot be done through cookies, which means you have to get rid of pixel tracking. Um, instead, you should run server-based tracking and um, run batch reporting to your affiliate network. Um, affiliates, same thing. The good old tracking pixel doesn't work on mobile. Um, what you should do is um, actually optimize your traffic or analyze your traffic using sub-IDs. And um, I put John Hassan's name in parentheses. He's, he's um, published a few, few um, guidelines or blog posts about automating that kind of stuff. So he's basically running his whole, his whole PPC stuff through sub-IDs. Um, also very important, you have to find out which handsets convert for, uh, for a particular offer. Um, we found that, for example, for, um, for dating, mobile dating offers, the older handsets tend to convert better than, um, than, for example, the iPhone. I assume that is because iPhone users are usually older, usually business people, some, something like that. Um, but that's just my, my, my assumption. And very important, you have to test, 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 test. Okay, moving on to actually building mobile sites. It's actually not that difficult. Um, mobile is, is um, pretty much standard HTML with a few differences. You're not supposed to use tables. Um, only use images when you need them so that the um, pages load fast. Um, also, you have to test what you build on different screens and test everything also with different operators. There may be technical problems sometimes. You can do, um, you can, there are also um, CSS commands that do not exist for the wired internet. For example, um, um, in form fields, you can, um, um, determine if that is, um, for example, a, a numeric character or what the form field is, is supposed to be. And this is actually something really interesting for all online and offline advertisers. You have um, the, the option to also establish a phone call or create a text message through a link. Um, so what people do is use click to call, for example, to run lead campaigns. And um, if you rotate the phone number, um, if you use a dynamic phone number, you can actually build um, a tracking system there and find out where your traffic came from. Um, yeah, if you have any questions about that, I can go into that later on. Traffic sources for advertising on on the mobile internet, um, first of all, very obvious, use your existing user base. Um, if you run ads on, on TV or even online on your site, put, put your mobile domain on there. You might get some juice. Same thing, um, you can do offline campaigns. You can also use, um, use browser plugins, for example, WordPress, um, if you, Want to create um, a WordPress plugin for, that automatically serves a mobile version of your of your site to mobile phone users? Um, that stuff exists already, but there's still a lot of room for developers. And you can do mobile SEO. Um, I know that um, some people might argue that SEO is also actually a paid traffic source because you might have to pay somebody to do it. But I can tell you right now. Um, hardly anybody is doing SEO on, on, um, on mobile. So if you jump in there, it, it's going to be very profitable. Paid traffic sources, not really that much different to the wired internet. You can do direct deals with um, publishers. You can 
go to network operators perhaps, the operators of the actual phone networks. Um, you can go to mobile communities and ad networks and also do paid search for mobile. Um, Google has, um, Google allows you to, to create ads that only show um, when a mobile phone user does a search. Yahoo is in process of doing it. Um, Microsoft has acquired a company that, that does, does that for them. So um, this, will, this, this stuff is growing as well. So how, when you have traffic, how do you monetize it? Um, you could do direct deals with merchants, but first of all, it's, it's uh, hard to set up really to establish a contact and, and um, get the tracking in place. And like I said, very often it's without any appropriate tracking. Um, so actually the best way to do it is um, perhaps go through ad networks. Usually they are CPM or CPC based, meaning um, you as an affiliate get paid by click. However, um, that's not really that attractive because the payouts are just very, very low. The, uh, the advantage of this is that you're not, you don't really need, need a conversion tracking there. Um, and affiliate programs, there are a few um, CPA-based um, affiliate programs for um, mobile web offers. They usually have much higher payouts and also you have a direct relationship between um, the affiliate and the merchant which is good, but the problem here is again the conversion tracking, the pixel-less tracking through the back end, which a lot of um, merchants and affiliate networks do not support. Existing advertisers as of today are mostly from the mobile entertainment industry, ringtones, games, quizzes, that kind of stuff. Um, in the UK where gambling is, um, is legal online, um, there are some mobile casinos and some of the uh, affiliate networks exhi exhibiting here today also run these offers. Um, what I really miss is merchants from, from the retail sector and large brands like Expedia or eBay. They, they are great for mobile and I really don't get why they don't want to monetize that traffic. There we go. Retail, mobile price comparison is, is huge. Um, anything that is um, related to reservations or bookings, like um, travel or train tickets, bus tickets, um, hotel, anything, or even concert tickets, um, that is great for mo mobile. Just imagine you're, I don't know, you're waiting at the airport and you realize, oh my gosh, there's a concert next week and I want to go to. What do you do? You probably go to um, either um, the actual mobile site of, of an ex existing merchant or you do just a search or something like that. So um, right now companies are losing a lot of money there. Um, Another big market is local deliveries, local services like groceries, pizza, you name it. It's great for mobile. Um, we do have um, a few advertisers, few merchants from the content industry already, but it's um, definitely improvable. And um, anything that's related to social networks, whether they are for business or for um, leisure like Facebook, MySpace, and blah, blah, blah. They have, they have mobile sites, but um, for example, dating, I, I'm not aware of any mobile dating affiliate programs, um, which is a shame because when people have idle time, what do they do? Perhaps um, use their phone and get in contact with a few people. Okay, what's, what's my summary? And I'm, after that, we can get to the questions, perhaps. There is a lot of mobile traffic already. Like you said, in, like you saw in the beginning, a lot of people use the, the web on their phones already. Um, 
my experience is that traffic is still quite inexpensive because there is little competition. Um, building mobile optimized sites isn't really that difficult. It's, if you know HTML, it's going to be a piece of cake. Um, the biggest problem for advertising and affiliate marketing on the mobile internet is actually the advertisers. We are missing advertisers. We are missing merchants that are willing to produce um, mobile optimized sites. And even those who have them already aren't really looking into, into the whole tracking and into affiliate marketing. That's one of the big problems. On the other hand, um, there is lots of room for new ideas and for startups. Okay, let's, let me give you some, some links. If you um, want to develop mobile sites, here we go. Ready.mobi is a site that lets you um, check the actual markup language. It, it, gives, it shows you errors and stuff. And the .mobi emulator actually um, shows you um, your site on a phone. It's, it's basically an emulator. If, when you test and build your site, um, you just go to this site and um, enter your URL, and you can see it on a variety of phones. You might want to serve different versions of mobile sites to different handsets. As we saw in the beginning, for example, the iPhone has a large screen. The old phones have very small screens. So it m might, might be useful in certain cases to not only build one mobile version, but like three for the different sizes. And there are um, different services. Um, that let you recognize w which phone is actually um, being used, which phone does the user use. It's through the user agent string of the browser, and you can query a database and it tells you exactly which phone it is, what the screen size is, whether it supports, I don't know, MP3, Java, all, all of that. The Werfel database is basically free, but it's not as good. What you should really do is use the um, device Atlas site. It's a paid service, um, but first of all, it's not really that expensive, and um, it's also um, much, much better. If you think of um, implementing a payment flow in your mobile site, for example, like you, you know it from, from PayPal, PayPal lets you um, um, create or add a payment system to your existing website. There are several providers that do that for mobile. Bango and Zong, for example. What Bango does is they have relationships with a lot of carriers all over the world. So what happens is people don't have to pull out their credit card and enter their credit card number on their phone. Um, the phone number is recognized by the carrier and passed on to Bango. In the end, the user pays through their phone bill. And in terms of conversion, that means it's just two clicks. Do you want to purchase? Yes. Do you really want to purchase? Yes. Bang. That's it. And it's, it's not unusual to see conversion rates of 30 40% if, if you do it well. OK. Just very briefly about me, um, I have a blog, I have um, a site for my company, and if you want to get in touch, um, go to Twitter or any of these um, um, networks. I'm on LinkedIn, Zing, and Facebook. All right, that's my part of the session. Um, if you have any questions, please use the microphone, and yeah, just go ahead. Housekeeping uh, questions. You, the, you went, the, the emulator went by so fast I wasn't able to get the URL. Sorry? Uh, I, the, the emulator, HTTP, yes. uh, went by so fast that oh, I, okay. I, I didn't get it, really get it. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, and then mtld.mobi.h. 
emulator.php. Second question was, um, uh, can you, there, you mentioned in the databases that there are several different sizes, sizes for, for handheld. Um, yes. Uh, uh, and that it might, you know, if someone were constrained for time or, or talent, um, it might be, uh, it might be best to go for the one, for the size that was the most, uh, got the most traffic. Mm -hmm. um, can, can you, from your experience, do you know which, which size does oh, yeah. get the most, most traffic? I don't know if we have internet on this computer. Let me just try it. Um, oh, we do. Great. What you should do is check out the Mobile Marketing Association. They publish the standard banner sizes for the mobile internet. Mobile. Banner. And mobile Banner Association? Mobile Marketing Association. Marketing. There we are. Association. Uh, okay. Um, well, basically, it's, it's four sizes. It starts, I think, at 128 by 75 pixels and goes up to 400 by something else. I, I can't remember the, the exact numbers, but oh, no. I just, I'm just going to kill this one here. So Anyways, it, anyway, um, that's the, mobile, the, mobile, the Mobile Marketing Association would be the place to go to find yes. out which... Uh, which sizes were the most uh, were the most widely yes, used? Yes, they also publish statistics per country. Sorry, uh, by country? Do they do they break it out by country? Um, I'm not sure about that, but um, if you need these numbers, you can also just contact me because um, we collect these data okay. in our system as well. Second, uh, a broader question was: um, I, I'm really piqued by the idea that you know you can you can get uh, you can do SEO on on uh, <laughs> on, on mobile and. And, and and get and get high rank for on 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 big keywords fairly easily yeah um, but mobile un, uh, mobile unlike unlike a unlike the large screen does not have room for a lot of words yeah uh, you uh, have to if you do SEO you have to optimize for um, very short keywords because nobody types in 50 character search terms it just doesn't it's Usually one or two words. That's pretty much it. So, so the the strategy for anybody to, doing SEO would be a, a web page that a web page that had 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 their keyword and that would be and plus a um, plus whatever the ad was and that and then well, you're done. Well, pretty much the the same SEO principles apply on the mobile web. It's not really that dif different. You have to have a good domain name, if possible, have the the keyword in the domain name, but at the same time, don't make it too long. Um, and then also do put it put all this stuff in, in your on the page, but that's only the on-site SEO um, aspect. Um, what you also need is, is links from from relevant pages. And um, so you how do you get how do you get it's it's fairly clear how the um, it's understood in the industry. There's pretty general understanding about how you get links back to your back to your uh, regular website. How do you get links back to your mobile website? You have to find mobile sites. Use search engine, seriously. Or use your phone and type in keywords and the pages that you find, contact these guys. Okay. Um, That's interesting. Yeah, that, that'd be very cool to be, um, to be able to top the search engines for mobile. <laughs> Hi, uh, I was wondering if you can recommend um, uh, a mobile, excuse me, a mobile blogging platform, or if none is available, maybe just a general content platform that makes it easy to work in mobile. Um, you mean a, a content management system? Or? Well, yeah. For example, if, uh, um, I don't know if perhaps a movable type might be available uh, to optimize for mobile, et cetera. Okay. Or maybe other similar tools. Um, I do know that WordPress does have a few plugins that create mobile sites. I'm not sure about um, the other systems like Joomla or Movable Type or 
I, I don't know, but I'm sure there is. And if not, let me know, then I'm going to program it. Okay. <laughs> um, what kind of opportunity do you see for affiliates in, in terms of uh, application development? Both Apple and Nokia are really uh, accessible in terms of getting access to their API and developing mobile apps. Is there any good potential there for affiliates? Um, the problem with, with apps is that they are client-based, meaning it's a lot more difficult. You have to have, you have within a year, if you publish different versions, you have five million different versions of your, or of your application um, spread out. Whereas if you create an actual site, you control what, what's out there because it's on, on your server. The, the good thing with or the good thing about applications is you can really generate volume but um, um, seriously I I am I've never really tried to um, go into the whole application development because um, um, the whole issue of, of tracking and measuring what you basically need is, is affiliate programs and um, most of the stuff is not on CPA yet. That's the problem. Hey, Peter, what's up? Um, quick question about the mobile SEO. Mm -hmm. Like, for example, when I Google on my iPhone, I get the same organic search results than I would if I were at a computer. Yes. So just from my understanding, I understood you to say that mobile SEO is kind of a separate thing, and you can, you know, top the ranks that way. So I don't understand how, like, you know, incoming links, whatever, keyword in the domain, whatever. How are we doing anything different for uh, mobility? And is Google looking at my user agent and changing the SERPs based on that? Um, yes. So Google is saying he's on an iPhone. I'm Google make treats a by more default. Relevant site. By default, Google treats the iPhone as a web device, not as a mobile device. So yeah. in my mobile page at the top, I just say XHTML whatever, you know, whatever the uh, designation is for mobile content, and Google will see that when they spider my site and give me more relevance to mobile users? Yes. You have to build mobile sites and perhaps um, detect the user agent and different and serve a different version of your site um, when you have a mobile user well, here, agent. Here's coming. my question. How does Google spider then the mobile version? Can I tell them to spider that and they'll give me more prominence for mobile users? Um, they also have um, spiders that um, pretend that they are mobile phones. I found that they send the user agent of the Nokia to something quite frequently. That was the question. So, um, and you also not going to run into duplicate duplicate um, um, content problems or, or cloaking issues if you serve. Um, different content to mobile user agents under the same URL. That's Do you have any examples of stuff that you've written that you could show us, like it, you know, popping up in a query, like something I could Google on my phone and say, "Oh, you know, there it is. That makes sense." Oh, the problem is, it's a lot of stuff is share. Is for I your. I can share. I have no problem. I can send it to you. But the problem is, we have a US IP address right now. I'm not going to see the search results. But, and cool. Thank you. So this is basically the This is what for example Google like looks like on on a phone. And um, there's also a browser plugin for Firefox so that you can set your browser to pretend it is um, it is a phone. It's called the user agent switcher. It's a Firefox add-on, and you can add um, 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 yeah, I'm not going to do it now, but you can add a list of, of um, phone user agents so that you can um, serve as if you were a mobile browser. Okay, any more? Um, so, the great thing about Bango is you can, you know, pay by your phone number, but the concern there is, what about security? Um, let's say you lose your phone, 
then you're completely vulnerable, right? Or have they come up with something that you can do to protect yourself that way? Um, the payment, the payment flow through uh, your phone bill actually started out with the uh, with the whole ringtone industry, and um, usually you cannot buy stuff that exceeds a certain amount of dollars. So even even if um, even if somebody steals your phone and makes makes purchases, um, you're unlikely to lose thousands of dollars because they also have fixed price points. Um, so this mobile payment flow, you, you can't buy a car like that, you can't buy jewelry, you can't buy expensive electronics like that. It's, it's mostly good for everyday, um, everyday products, um, you know, anything between a, a dollar and probably $20, something like that. Peter, a follow-up on the question this guy over here asked. Mm -hmm. um, just to make sure that I understood it uh, correctly, he, he was saying that he, when he goes, when he uses his iPhone he can, and does a search, he will find that, um, uh, that the same similar search results will come up on his iPhone as, yes. would, as would come up on, on the big screen. Yes. Was your point that the reason that is happening is because there, there are a few, there are a few mo, dot mobi Applications um, on the space, but if they were, they would get, they would be given, they would be given preference no. to these on to these. No. Google treats the iPhone as a non-mobile device. Google treats the iPhone as as um, as a wired internet device, as a computer, simply because it is able to display large websites through the zoom in, zoom out functionality. So if you do a search with an old school phone and with a smartphone, same, same location, same keyword, you're going to get different results. Okay. Uh, do you know what, what part of the market, how, how large of a market the iPhone has? Um, in, the US compared to the in the US, it's huge. Um, but in Europe, Asia, um, hardly anybody uses, uses the phone. The phone or that particular handset is First of all, not available in, in most countries. So the caveat, so the caveat to your to your to, to the, what you said about the dot mobi space being um, not well populated by SEO is that this is especially true over overseas for for handheld devices yes. which are not which are not iPhone related. Yes. Okay. So it's possible to search my server log files for s certain strings and find out how many came from mobile devices? Uh, in your log files? or Server log files to see who's hit my site from yeah. phones, yeah, et cetera. Yeah. Is there a list of... A list of... Um, well, in your log files, you usually have the user agent in, in the log file line, right? And then all you do is do a query. Ah. I'm going to show you an example right quick. I hope Thank this you. works. Mm. Basically, it has um, a list of user agents, and then it matches Ah, you have to log in now. Anyways, um, you have to create an account first. Anyways, that's that's basically the site that you should use and, and download the file. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any charts? <laughs> hey, I have more questions. Uh, for uh, the follow-up on the on the WordPress on the WordPress plugin questions, can you develop a? a is your point is that you can develop uh, a word a WordPress blog, write it write it into write it as you would normally, and then uh, and then the plugin will convert that to a dot mobi yes to a dot mobi format yes how do you how do you create the uh, the URL for it on the uh, what do you mean the um, URL well there is a 
site dot mobi is dot different from site dot com. Okay. Uh, the uh, on a on a WordPress blog on a WordPress blog for your computer, it would be site dot com. I mean, just, you couldn't you couldn't have a, a dot mobi on a computer. Yes, on. you can. Oh, you can. Yeah. Okay. Well, then never mind. So all all you all you have to do basically is register a Mobi domain yeah. and then throw WordPress on it, but make sure that you s configure the plugin so that it always displays the mobile version of WordPress or the mobile output to the user because one regulation of the .mobi domain is that it serves mobile sites by default. Um, you're not supposed to um, publish websites, regular websites there, because then they can basically take that domain away from you. Um, I mean, this seems, the use of a WordPress plus a, plus a, plus a .mobi plugin seems like the easiest way to go. Yeah, to just that. use WordPress and um, either use an existing plugin or, or build one yourself. Uh, Twitter. I'm, yes, I'm about to. Um, I think that's, no, then I just do a, let me find the list, WordPress mobile is one, this is the one of Alex King, but there's another one. Um, can't find it right now, but um, can you, uh, do you rate, can you rate them one better than the other? Um, actually, there's one from a guy in South Africa. I can't remember the exact name of the plugin, um, but um, I think it's I think it is Moby Press or something like that. Um, and this one is really really good. It looks nice. Um, or this, and you can actually change the colors, fonts, and, and all of that, and I would prefer that. Um, maybe mobile press or mobi press, something like that. Oh, I thought you were about to ask a question, sorry. <laughs> um, we still have some time left. Um, wh what do you guys want to do? Do you want me to show you a few sites or talk a little? Um, let me think what we can do. Students are not money makers. They're just like informational. That's what we do. I hope. Here's one. Imagine this is a mobile phone. Oops. And basically, this is a small affiliate, mobile affiliate microsite. Um, it's offering ringtones. If, for example, you were from the US, what do you want? Um, uh, oh, that one didn't work. That's because we're not using a mobile browser. Let's go here. I hope this one works. It's German. And then you're sent to Playphone, to the German mobile version of Playphone. And um, what you can do with these mini sites, you can create your own banners or, I don't know, use PPC traffic, whatever you want. So um, also this stuff is great for SEO because, all right, let's take the US stuff. Um, First of all, you have um, title tag. Um, 
that's how you tell that it is that's how you tell basically the search and then that you're um, um, that it shouldn't treat that site as a web page C S S blah 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 and then in the content part you also have um, the H tag so it's the on site SEO is really nothing special really it's it's basically very simple and um, you just have to try it. What, uh, one thing, um, if possible, put the CSS not in a separate CSS file, put it in the actual source code in the head because certain phones don't load CSS files fast enough to render them before the actual page is displayed. So what happens sometimes is that the page is displayed as if the CSS file was deleted and it looks awful. So oh, even if it makes your pages a, a little bit larger, um, put the CSS in the actual file. All right, so that was one example. Um, I'm, I'm trying to find um, I'm going to install this user agent thing now, just to show you. Or we go to the to the emulator. Uh, come on. I think it's got a Java applet, and that's why it takes so long. I'm sorry, now it just died. the computer crap. No, it didn't. Let's try it again. Here we go. I think the problem here is that the inter connect internet connection is so slow. Um, all right. Let. What shall we do? Which side? Let's use that one. And the side that we've just seen on in the in the Firefox browser on a phone looks like this um, so this is a relatively narrow screen if you select a different handset um, um, it's white already same file and that's because each phone also renders the renders everything differently. That's why I kept saying you have to test 
you have to use very popular phones. You have to have them, if possible, at your home, buy them on eBay or something to actually test your sites. Um, so um, if, let's go to Google because you were asking about search. What should we look for? What's your niche? Ringtones. Ringtones. So you see this search result page looks very different from a regular ad. Google has, um, instead of um, 10 search results, has only two spots, one at the top and one at the bottom. And the rest is SEO. So um, you're not distracted by that many ads. And as you can imagine, people have to scroll to actually see um, the, second, the second organic search result. So it really matters that you're either the number one in the organic or that you have the top spot in, in, the, in the AdWords. So let's click at that guy. So, um, so that's, that's a merchant. Let's click here, see what happens. Blah, 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 blah. Anyways, um, different thing, tickets. Need tickets .mobi. And in the, and the first search result is Ticketmaster because what Google does, you see it says web pages right here. It actually um, uses and displays web pages and, and um, renders them through a proxy to display um, a web page on, on a mobile phone. So you're not surfing on Ticketmaster, you're surfing on Google on a proxy server. Ticketmaster cannot set its cookies and all of that. Um, instead, if they had a mobile site, a proper mobile site, um, you would have seen the mobile version of Ticketmaster in the search results. Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, well, <laughs> do you know if there's a way to get uh, keyword search volumes from mobile users like there is for the Google keyword tools? Um, for normal Google searches. just launched um, a, a, mobile, a keyword suggestion tool for mobile ads, I think this week, okay. quite recently. Otherwise, you can also um, use the standard keyword su suggestion tools and, and see how it works. But keep in mind, mobile users usually um, type less, shorter keywords, shorter terms. How do you get to the, the new one they launched? Sorry? The new one they launched, how do you get to it's that? It's within the old one. You just select, um, I don't want this for regular ads. I want to have this for, for mobile ads. So okay, and that's, just log into AdWords and then. That's an AdWord keyword suggestion? Yeah. OK, thanks. All right, anybody else? Once you get your sites all coded, and like when you showed us your source code, it was very mm -hmm. pretty, well structured and organized. Yep. Once you finalize your sites, do you get rid of all of the spaces to make it load faster? Does that make a difference? Um, it doesn't really matter. I mean, um, if if we're coming back to to bytes, inf uh, you know, individual bytes influencing the load time, then um, nah, it doesn't matter. Rock on. Just um, the only thing you have to watch out is not to put many graphics because. Um, because of the bandwidth, and each graphic is, each image is a separate request, and each request from your phone to the network, um, to the actual web server and back takes a long time, and that's, that's the problem. So um, use very little, little images, um, and also shrink the, shrink the images, use, uh, I don't know, um, JPEG compression or um, when you save them, um, 
don't don't throw I don't know 100k images there. It's not going to work. Um, all right. Do we have any other questions? No. Well then. Thank you for being here. I appreciate it. I know that there were other great sessions going on at the same time. Um, um, before you leave, do me the favor and um, fill out the feedback form and leave it at the door. Um, and if you have any questions, I'll be around for a couple more minutes. Thank you.